would seem like an amazing coincidence if Earth were the only planet in the galaxy on which intelligent life evolved. It is very natural to think that if it happened here, the one planet we have studied closely, then surely it could have happened on a lot of other planets in the galaxy as well, we simply haven't found them yet. This argument, however, rests on a fallacy because it overlooks what is commonly called an observation selection bias. And this says that regardless of whether intelligent life is common or rare, every observer is guaranteed to find themselves originating from a place where intelligent life did, in fact, arise. The fact that we are here asking these questions is proof that there is at least one success. And since only the successes lead to observers who can wonder about their existence, it would be a mistake to regard our planet as a randomly selected sample from all planets. Rather, it would be more accurate to regard our planet as though it were a random sample from only those planets that harbor life. An observation selection bias guarantees that whatever planet we call ours was a success story. As long as there are enough planets in the galaxy, or the universe, to compensate for the low probability of intelligent life arising, then we can safely assume that some success stories exist. Right now, we only know of one. So let's ask the question, if the probability of intelligent life is low, how many planets besides ours would there need to be to give rise to intelligent life? The good news is, the numbers are large. We can assume our galaxy is nothing special and that there are about 10 billion stars per galaxy with the potential to have any sort of life. And there are 100 billion galaxies in the universe. That's a lot of stars, so we have plenty of chances for a success story. Our problem now becomes figuring out how low is the low probability for any of these planets to have intelligent life. There are many people who seem to take for granted that the evolution of life on this planet was straightforward. Lengthy, yes. Complex, absolutely. Yet it was ultimately inevitable. Carl Sagan himself held this view when he said, the origin of life must be a highly probable circumstance. As soon as conditions permit, up it pops. But is this really true? This view might be completely mistaken, and there's hardly any evidence to support it. Evolutionary biology does not enable us to calculate from first principles how probable or improbable the evolution of intelligent life on Earth was. There could be many things that get in the way and filter out the emergence of intelligence. There could be any number of events that can stop a species' evolutionary march towards reason and comprehension. Such events have become known as great filters. For example, perhaps it is very, very unlikely that simple bacteria should emerge on any given Earth-like planet. Going from zero life to simple life may be so hard that it only occurs one time in a trillion. If so, then this event could filter out a planet from ever getting an intelligent species at all. It may be equally hard or harder to go from simple bacteria to eukaryotes, multi-celled organisms. That could also be a filter. Perhaps the reason we haven't heard any signals by now is that most civilizations were filtered out at this early stage. This would explain Fermi's paradox. The thing is, we just don't know. We only have one data point to work with. Earth. If there is such a thing as a great filter, and the fact that our galaxy shows no outward signs of teeming with intelligence makes this a very compelling argument in favor of there being one, then what could the nature of this filter be? And even more crucially, where in our history does this filter reside? Have we experienced it yet, or do we still have yet to face the great filter? One way to tell is if we find simple life elsewhere in our own solar system, like on Mars or Europa. If we find evidence of simple bacterial life so close to home without even having to leave our own solar system, then this supports the case that creating simple organisms is easy and can be ruled out as the great filter. If we find more complex life on Mars, such as a vertebrate, then Carl Sagan was right. Life is a highly probable occurrence and that evolutionary step is not the great filter. Taken individually, each one of these discoveries would be among the most important in the history of humanity. And it would be very terrible news. It would mean that the Great Filter, whatever it is, 
is not in our past. And we may have yet to face it. If the emergence of life on other planets is simple and inevitable, as would be the case if we find some evidence for it on Mars, then maybe there's something that happens to civilizations to prevent their emergence. There's been plenty of time for a civilization to develop anywhere in our galaxy over the course of the last six billion years and still have their signals reach us. If they once existed, and we don't hear them now, could mean they faced the Great Filter after their civilization developed. Asteroid impacts, bad totalitarian regimes, nanotechnology experiments, any number of things could constitute a future Great Filter. The possibilities are limited only by what a civilization could achieve. And if we discover simple life elsewhere, we should immediately be on the lookout for possible candidates as our own technology advances. Not to mention being on the lookout for any number of random celestial encounters. It would be welcome news to learn that the Great Filter is behind us because it would mean that one major obstacle that prevents civilizations from developing happens early in their history, and we've already passed it. It may be that the stage of going from zero life to simple life is harder than we think it is. That step may turn out to be a profoundly difficult one, one that is so rare only a few planets in a hundred million or so would ever get to see it happen. Remember, evolution has very little to say about whether life is common or not. It's only a framework that describes what happens to life once it begins. But there are 10 billion possibilities in this galaxy alone. That's more than enough to overcome the low probability. There should be more success stories out there besides ours. If that's true, then we may be on the cusp of a great avalanche of signals from other worlds. It has taken us roughly three and a half billion years to get here, and we've only been broadcasting for a little over a hundred years, which means that our signals have only traveled a hundred light years. Considering that our galaxy is a hundred thousand light years across, it's entirely possible no one really knows we're here. Assuming it took life on other planets a similar amount of time to evolve as it did here, I don't know, let's say four or five billion years, and they are on the other side of the galaxy, then we wouldn't necessarily know about them either they too would only be broadcasting for a short time. Not having detected any signals yet may only be due to the fact that not enough time has passed. If the Great Filter is behind us, then we may be about to get flooded. <laughs>